Hi, this is Robert, and I wanted to talk to you about building a dim bulb tester, which is a current limiting device used when you're building uh, home projects, DIY projects, and you're not sure of the wiring. You never are, so it's always a good idea to have one of these in the circuit. But basically what it does, if we look at the diagram here, the hotline comes in and you have a bypass switch here which can short out the light bulb, which is the current limiting element. It has a series resistance. And if whatever you have plugged into your outlet here draws too much current, the, the light bulb will light up. So. This is the basic circuit, and uh, uh, I thought I'd need uh, wire nuts and all kinds of complicated stuff, and I found I could do it just by uh, wiring point to point on the terminals of the devices. Uh, I have a standard dual duplex outlet here, a uh, standard uh, whatever it is, 15, 20 amp outlet. And then I have a standard switch. Uh, the cord, all the stuff I got at Ace Hardware, the cord is your standard uh, grounded power cord. Uh, it's designed for appliances. It's rated at 15 amps. And I like it because uh, it has the conventional U.S. color code for uh, uh, electrical wiring and that the uh, black wire is the hot, the white wire is neutral, and of course green is ground. So if you look, we have our outlet coming in. We're going through this guy, which is a little uh, pinch uh, strain relief thing. It's a knockout. Uh, you knock the knockout out of the 4x4 standard galvanized case. I wanted this mainly so it would be heavy and sit on the table. And power cords wouldn't be pulling it off the table. Hopefully, we'll see. But anyway, you see this uh, just screws in. Uh, you knock out the knockout. You have all these little knockout holes that you can see here. You knock one out. You end up with change. A nice slug to put in the soda machine. And then... Uh, this uh, just screws in on the back. I don't know if you can see the, 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 there's a big ring or nut that goes on the back. And then you just pinch it down on the cord. So our hot, our hot line comes in, goes immediately to the switch. And you can see here, here's the hot line coming in, goes to the switch and it, takes two paths here. It can either go through the switch here, which is what happens if the switch is in the off position. And uh, if I switch it to on, then on will turn on the light bulb. And that happens through this other line, which comes from the hot input directly to the uh, uh, one side of the uh, light bulb. So you can see that here, we're going in the one side. And then here's the switch, and in the off position it bypasses the light bulb. Here's the other side coming out of the light bulb. And they both connect at the hot side. Here we go. Uh, hopefully you can see that. It's trying to dance around, but we're coming from the hot side of the light bulb, and uh, they're both connected here. And so, hot is going into this outlet here now. The neutral just goes directly to, neutral just comes in, goes directly to the neutral outlet on our, this outlet will power our device. I should put that on the drawing. To uh, DUT. Device under test. And then I just have the grounds connected. Uh, and they will ground to the chassis through their mounting hardware. 
And that's about it. Somewhere I have a nice switch plate to put on the top. And I have an enormous light bulb, which will be our, uh, there. You never have a large enough light bulb. A 100 watt bulb would have been fine. This beast is 300 watt, but it should work well. And that's about it. That's how you do one. Now, at this point here, I did break. Th There's normally a little uh, mold. Uh, uh, this is usually one solid piece of metal connecting neutrals on both sides. But since I'm doing a uh, atypical wiring, I've broken that connection. That allows me to go in with hot on the one side of the top and neutral on one side of the uh, bottom. And that's about it. Uh, these are designed to, uh, if you're measuring, uh, if you're powering up a piece of gear you've built for the first time, you never know if, uh, you know, uh, you could miss something, something could be miswiring, miswired, there could be a loose wire inside the unit, uh, or a, a piece of lead, you clipped off of something, may have flown in there. So just to be on the safe side, you want to have a way to limit current on the, uh, in this case, the uh, power amplifier. And uh, so to do that, uh, we put the uh, series resistance of the light bulb in place, in series with our outlet. And that's about it. I'll probably, uh, at this point, I have the uh, uh, capacitor boards on the uh, Nelson Pass F5 Turbo amp it, uh, wired up, and I'm ready to check them for hopefully full and symmetrical output. That would be nice. That would be a good thing. And uh, the uh, amplifier boards are wired to the back panel now, just not connected uh, power-wise. So I want to make sure the supplies work, and then I'll uh, wire them up to the uh, capacitor boards and get the whole thing, uh, see what happens. I would prefer having a variac in place, so I still have two variacs, or I should say one and a half variacs that I'm going to see uh, if I can get. Uh, one's a 240 volt and one's a, a pre-Columbian. Uh, I don't know, I'm sure, uh, I think it came from Edison's lab, but it's ancient. Uh, I have a very old one and a very odd voltaged one, and uh, hopefully between the two of them I can get one that uh, I feel reliable, feel confident in powering this bad boy up on. Before I go, we have a snow day. If you can see the snow out there. So, very snowy day. And that's it. We'll see you later. Bye.